Welcome to Super Movie Brothers. Let's start the show. This is a podcast on the Podfix Network. You can check out more shows like it at podfixnetwork.com. Super Movie Brothers, episode 93. I'm your host, Super Movie Brother Dave. I'm your host, Super Movie Brother Jay. Jay, what the fuck were you up to this week, man? Well, I finished up the rest of my little vacation week and went to the theater and saw a few films, which is great. Um, I went back to work and realized, my God, I need to get the hell out of that place. <laughs> <laughs> I it was, have- no, honestly, it's just one of those things where, more than anything, it's our housekeeper is, is retiring, Mr. Janelle. I'm not sure oh, if you okay, remember yeah, her. Yeah. Um, so... You know, she's been taking a little bit more sick time off and blah, blah, blah. So, obviously, boys will be boys. And my particular one building is just an utter disaster right now with her uh, not being there. And um, it was not welcoming going back to work there and seeing that place. But either or, uh, either way, it was just great seeing everybody, all, all the kids that I like and everything. and uh, That I like. Yeah, the, the ones that I like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the implication. <laughs> But um, went down to the city with John. Uh, we saw a band. My friend, she moved to Boston. She was actually in this music video. And she moved to Boston or Baston? Baston. Baston. Yeah, it was unfortunate. Your friend became a masshole. No. Oh, <laughs> but um, but it was good seeing them, and then and then you know had a good time down there, and um, got myself a date, Dave from Bumble. Oh, you got a Bumble date. Bumble date. All right. Well, First one. Describe. Well, I don't know. Thursday. Well, I mean, no, 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 no. Not not her. I don't care what she looks like and stuff like that. What I mean by describe is, is like, how did this come about? I mean, obviously, Bumble's a, a, a thing where she has to message you. Right. So. It, it was honestly very kind of quick and easy. And Was um, it banal? <laughs> no. It was a very banal. No, not very banal. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was good. It was easy conversation. She... Lives in the Chestnut Hill area, you know, an area that I'm not exactly too familiar with. It's a little different nook outside of Philadelphia. Yeah. And um, uh, I'm not exactly sure what she does for a living yet. Um, we're going to go out Thursday night. She's tall, 5'10". She's got like a strawberry blonde hair kind of looking thing. I said I don't, I don't care what she looks like. I just want to know how like she messaged you. What she just- nah, she just, it was really easy. It was just kind of like, hey, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. We've been up to. Um, oh, that's boring. Casual talk. It, it wasn't anything too crazy. That's boring. I was hoping for like, I was hoping for like the same type of things like that, that people say on Tinder, but like, you no, know. No, it's not like, so uh, what do you like to do yeah. in the bedroom? No, no. I, I just, I would like to know that like women are just like. You want to have pizza and fuck? Like, you know, like just that would be great. I've never experienced that. Like, I hear, I feel like I hear about this Tinder world of like, you know, it's simply a, a fuck website, but I've never experienced that myself. I think what it is, I think what it is, Jay, is that that's the way younger women are, you know, maybe a generation behind us, and you are now too old for all of that. <laughs> and it's written on Perhaps. your face in your crow's feet and your gray hair. Oh. <laughs> It's my wisdom written yeah. all over my face. <laughs> <laughs> Until they talk to you. No, 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 wisdom. no, no wisdom. No wisdom. <laughs> so for me, uh, I didn't really do a whole lot this week. We did a lot of party planning because it was Logan's fourth birthday party. We did. And uh, it was, we had a great time. You know, kids look like they had a great time, which is the most important thing. Definitely. Um, of course, as with all children's parties, two injuries. Both just on, two, just two. Both on my side of the family. Uh, like my, I think both were looking. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> my niece uh, tripped and fell and 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 hit her face on the root of a tree oh. and busted her lip. And then, like ten minutes later, my daughter got hit in the face with uh with her swing set. Someone jumped off the swing. I witnessed that one. And the swing swung back and smacked her right in the teeth, and she got knocked out. Busted her lips, yeah. and I was like, oh god, now I got to send her to school with this gnarled, nasty lip. <laughs> <laughs> Did it blow up the next day? No, it wasn't. Okay. That, it wasn't that bad. We just we 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 just put like A and D on it and stuff like that to 
to help it heal, but then to also stop it from cracking and splitting and continuously yeah. bleeding and stuff like that. But other than that, she had a great time. She gets <laughs> she gets over being injured. She makes a big scene when she gets hurt. Like oh, a, yeah. A big scene. She gets over it real freaking quick, though. But, she does. Uh, so, but other than that, we had a great time. Everyone got to hang out. Got to see Kenny. I haven't seen Kenny in uh, I know. It's good to see good everybody. Bit, you know, because he has, he has to travel so far down here now. It's almost over an hour drive, which, you know, when you say it's over an hour drive, it's like, that's not a lot. But it is. It takes it out of you. With young kids. With young kids when you're traveling. tough. Yeah, it's not easy. So, but that was great seeing Kenny, uh, and it was great, you know, just just getting together with everybody. It was a shame that I had work that day and was pretty much missed yeah, a good every, chunk of the party because I think as we, I arrived, all of the young families were leaving. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, you came at like Rob, Mark, Kenny, close, yeah, close to four o'clock. So yeah. it was like uh, that's when that's that's when everyone three hours in. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the the whole movie cocktail podcast crew was was here. Even even old even, even old guard old Kenny. like Kenny. It was on. It was on the original movie cocktail. That was nice. All the new guard and the old guard, all yep. the same. Our our Australian replacement for Kenny. I wonder they if got Kenny will ever make no, an appearance. It's too hard, man. What's he gonna do? The the dude has it's to impossible. drive. Dude has to drive an hour and a half to work every, He'd have to sleep every morning. Yeah. Yeah, he had to sleep here. It's ridiculous. No. Uh, but it, it might be fun maybe for a Patreon episode one time just to get Kenny on to do something with me. Maybe I can travel up there to him and carry some of this stuff. Uh, but other than that, I watched the Flyers. Flyers are done. They're mm. out. No longer in the any NHL playoffs, which is completely fitting, given how hard it was for them to get into the playoffs. And going up against the Penguins, man, I got I. I'm a Philly fan, so I hate the Penguins. I hate the Penguins. Right. I hate Crosby. I hate Latang, but I gotta give it to him, man. Murray is a fucking stone wall, uh, and they got a fucking fantastic goalie. Crosby only looks like he's gotten better in years. I, there's, there's they no- put up a lot of points. Yeah, n- nothing I can say. They were a better team this year, and uh, the Flyers have have a couple great forwards, but they they just lack defense, man. Just no no great defenders, no no great presence in goal. It's just uh same same story for the past 10 years i know it's so sad but it was very sad because they were up for a lot of the game and then eight to five i think is where it ended it was just pr- i still think this the, the one non-call during this tripping and no no there was another changed one. the whole dynamic of the rest of the game i don't think so i think the game was already going downhill at that point if you were watching it was already going that it, way. it was starting to go yeah but I don't know, but the Sixers looking great. You well, I mean, if you like basketball, I don't like basketball. Very proud of the Sixers, but I don't like basketball, so it's not, it's not that big of a thing for me because it's not, you know, I just I'm not into the sport itself, just the sport in general. So it's great that you know if we if we bring home another championship in in the same year as the Eagles win a championship, but um, the Eagles winning the championship will not be usurped or overshadowed by any other championship that could be won. Phillies, maybe, maybe, <laughs> but I doubt it. Eagles winning was so huge. Oh my god! And then uh, Jay, you went out to the theater. You said so. You saw a bunch of films. What did you see this week, man? I saw Love Simon. It is essentially a good-natured high school coming-of-age story that follows the lead coming out of the closet. He is gay. He knows he's gay for many years. Um, he has friends. They over accentuate that he's just a normal kid, just like you and I. And he just does a lot of normal things. I um, love how you just said a normal kid like you and I. We're not kids. That's what they say. We're not kids. That's Jay. what they say. We're fucking old. In the trailer, you can't say he's a kid We're like a kid you and at I. heart, Dave. No, no, yeah, I might be a kid at heart, but wow. my, you know, the 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 fucking limp that I have lately over my ankle killing me says that I'm getting older. That'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Josh Dumel and Jennifer Garner play his parents. How endearing is that? I haven't seen Josh Dumel in a while. Right. What a hunk. Hunk. Yeah. He's and like they're he's, a good looking couple, so, I'll tell you. So he's like the all American, like good looking version of Timothy Oliphant. <laughs> like he, uh, right. <laughs> like Timothy Oliphant is still a, a fantastic looking hunk as well. But if you put Josh Dumal and Timothy Oliphant next to each other, like that could be a, a before and after meth picture. Like yeah. you, know, you see those yeah. people like this is them before they were like, on meth. The this t- is them <laughs> it's like it's like the, like Josh Dumal is the one that you want to marry yeah. and, and and Timothy Oliphant is the one you want to fuck. I mean <laughs> he's like the bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy Oliphant, like he's gonna give you the cigarette and the and the wink. I remember you know? the first time I saw <laughs> Timothy Oliphant, it, he was playing a piece of shit drug dealer in um in the girl next door. Yeah, <laughs> so, oh I know that's the first time I saw him. He was first fantastic. Time I saw him. And then Josh Dumal, who's had such a career low that he returned to the Transformers franchise. <laughs> he got out and then he came back. That's how bad shit's gotten. But uh, he's married. To, well, he was married to Fergie. They actually got divorced. But um, 
you know you, he's you, doing all right. You know what Fergie's claim the fame is? She has the exact same eyes as Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah, well that's because of her uh, former druggy past. <laughs> her eyes just like they, they, they do this like drooping thing. Like everything out about her, everything else about her, you're like, God, she's gorgeous. And then like she opens her eyes and you're like, oh, oh. Like, hey, oh. Oof. Anyway, uh Love Simon. Yeah, it's 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 um a story that follows him with um f- well essentially he finds out another peer in his school sends out a memo um also closeted gay i'm i'm just afraid to come out blah 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 these are the reasons why so he comes you know obsessed with trying to find out who out who this guy is um still explore his little ways of of of, <laughs> of get, getting through the the day in day out high school drama we got a stuff. mystery to solve scoob we got to figure out which other yeah. kid is gay but honestly the the, the isn't movie, that like a no no isn't that like like you shouldn't be outing another person well, that does come into play later on in the film where okay, good. Um, a character does do that. And it, yeah, it's harsh. It's fucked up. Um, but, but ultimately, it, it's, it's a very sugar coated little pleasant film. You said you, you it's, described it's nothing, it as, you described it as, as, as a romantic comedy. Like it kind of, it reminds me of like a, rom- a romantic comedy in, yeah. in many, many, many ways, which is significant that it's like the first, you know, gay protagonist in a romantic comedy I think it's sort the of. first one Not, at least for with big studio I was gonna say, yeah i mean release like this, everyone yeah. knows that if you go on netflix there is like a gay and lesbian oh, of course. section there's yeah. a lot of films that are on there but they're not big releases like this and it, and it is a big release and this i would argue is not that big of a release it's about as big of a well, release as super troopers too <laughs> yeah but for this kind of movie i mean you can't get much more of a bigger release than this right true that um but I, i'm gonna still give this a b minus because it's it's very enjoyable uh, a lot of the characters are a lot of fun um and it is an easy watch. It's a good, good little film. Also, so uh, Blockers as well. The ensemble comedy uh, follows the story of uh, three girls who grew up together, best friends, and then prom night comes around, and all of a sudden they want to develop a sex pact to lose their virginity. <laughs> which, then, which we talked about it. It's it's interesting that it, it's it's the same trope that you saw in right. all eighties films and and even in like American Pie and stuff like that. But now it's flipped and it's the girls who are making the sex pact, which is right. interesting. Did they do much with that concept? About a, a little bit about like the breaking of a ge- of gender roles and stuff like that. Like yes, did it um, stand itself apart from other comedies by doing that, or did it just or was it just another it, slapstick comedy? Starring John Cena. <laughs> no, it, it kind of did. It kind of did. Okay. Yeah, it definitely it, it did. But it, the thing is, the marketing played up so much of the parents trying to get into all these shenanigans to stop because they find out that they're going to have this sex pack. They go off the prom. They find out like, oh, shit, we, we need to stop them before this happens. And then you see, you know, the three parents go and try to stop them. And, you know, that's where the movie falls a little bit apart for me because I think a lot of the comedy moments didn't quite hit um really did not and i loved the girls i thought the girls storylines i thought the actresses were fantastic and i really liked them as um individuals and also and um just as their chemistry together as a threesome and then you know even all these other little side <laughs> roles you yeah, said, yeah. Threesome. three girls threesome <laughs> ah. now there's your teenagers Jay, get your fucking head out of the gutter, you <sighs> pederast. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so it was still a rather enjoyable movie. Um, I do think it was pretty stupid at times, though, with the parents and their and their little roles here here and there. But overall, it was okay. I'll give it a C. All right. Lastly, I saw You Were Never Really Here. This is written and directed by Lynn Ramsey of We Need to Talk About Kevin. Dave, you and I both enjoy this movie. I just think it's funny that it has uh, Joaquin Phoenix in it, and uh, he was in that he was in that movie that's called I'm Not Here, right? Right. And I, I, I really, honestly, based on the title, I thought this was a sequel to I'm Not Here. <laughs> well, I mean, he's got a Doesn't similar it's- beard. <laughs> <laughs> right. It sounds like... I was never really here. Like, it's just like I'm not here. I was never really here. It's just I. It just I. I honestly I had to look it up on IMDb. I was like, is this a sequel to to that? And it's not. No. 
Okay. No, no, no. That one bit. This is a movie that's about uh, post-traumatic stress, correct? Yeah. So the story follows, you know, he's essentially haunted. I mean, he's got haunted PS, uh, PTSD, you know, who's a- his performance is absolutely brilliant in this movie, by the way, um, who is essentially a paid man to track down young girls or any kind of girl that is caught up in like a sex trafficking type situation or is lost and can't f- be found or like things like that. Like he's definitely so it's taken on the with Joaquin Phoenix. Sort of. Sort of, yeah. Minus the badassery of uh, Liam Neeson, I assume. (laughs) Well, there is. Well, it's interesting because the violence um, is not glorified. Um, It is at times. It's it is very brutal. It's very graphic. Um, It's very artsy the way it's it's played out. I thought it was actually one of the best PTSD kind of displays on film. Um, that was really interesting to see. It's really uneasy though to watch it, but it's really pure, like independent cinema at, at its finest. Um, you know, the score is also done by Johnny Greenwood. I've talked about before on the show, and he really did a, a number on this film. He had a lot of different kind of sounds mixed in with uh, the so, film. So something you're not doing that we normally do. Worth it to see it in the theaters. Worth it to worth it to watch it. This is definitely a Jay Z kind of corner film where like this is this is not for everybody. One hundred. Okay. Uh, it, it's 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 uneasy to watch and um if you can get, if you're interested in something a little bit different than the normal mainstream things in theaters right now definitely go out and check it out in theaters i think it's really worth your your time um i i give this an a i really enjoyed this movie it's definitely one of my favorites so far this year um it's 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 taught 90 minutes um taught. it's taught and I dug it. I dug it a lot. All right. Well, I did also get out to the theaters this week, and I was able to see several movies. And the first movie I want to talk about is Super Troopers 2. All right. So Super Troopers 2. Uh this film, man, uh, it, it's been in development for 16 years since the first one. It has gone over 32 script drafts, as I heard uh, in an interview with them. And it was a crowdfunded movie, which a lot of people know. They actually made their crowdfunding for, for their original budget very quickly. They kept the crowdfunding up to see what else they could do uh, with, with, with budget-wise. And I think all of that extra money and all of that budget went into cameos and to ancillary cast. And I think it was kind of wasted because this film was, it does not feel like it's a film that has been in development for 16 years with 32 script rewrites. I don't believe it. Right. I mean, and, and they're the only ones that worked on the script. It's just that. How many again? 32. No, how many uh, people wrote this again? I'm sorry. Well, uh, Broken Lizards, five guys. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's a lot. Okay. Right. But, but they're, they're, they're guys that, that were a, a, you know, they were a comedy troupe in college. They, they made, they've been making films together for but over, as, t- for over 25 years. But as guys get older and, I know. and a little bit wealthier, no, they're going to I mean, be no, a little bit guys, more stubborn. These guys have never been wealthy. I mean, that's, okay. that's the thing. They're, they're not wealthy guys, upper middle class guys. But what I find like what I find interesting is there is absolutely nothing wrong with the broken lizard guys in this film at all. Nothing wrong with the characters. They all fall right back into those characters again. And and it's pretty it's pretty seamless from the first one to the second one. It, my problem with it is the comedy was not as on point. A lot of the stuff in Super Troopers is hilarious. And there might be rose-colored glasses that goes along with that. It might be that I was at a younger age and immature comedy spoke to me more then. However, there are a lot of jokes in this that fall flat. And the ones that fall flat are the ones that are continual jokes that show up throughout the whole uh, film. That's the problem. Like, uh, Do you think it's the way it was like, directed like the way it was no, cut and everything like that no, like it just no, no, okay no, no it just didn't no. work okay. no these are uh, so w- w- i was just thinking like these are guys who like they were young they were in their you know late 20s and early 30s when they did the first one so coming back now when you're in your in, when you're 45 to to make this film you know to, when you're when you're it's it, it's completely different are they out of touch with what's funny maybe 
Like maybe they are out of touch. Uh, I think if you liked the first one, then you'll then then you'll then you'll find enjoyment in this one. If you didn't like the first one, or you thought the first one was okay, you're not going to like this one. You're not going to go with it. The story is absolutely ridiculous from the get go. It has a ten minute opening sequence that I just couldn't go with. I I just didn't like it. I I I didn't find the majority of it funny. I knew exactly what they were doing. When they did it, I mean, mild spoilers, uh, it opens with a dream sequence and it was absolutely just mind bendingly <laughs> stupid. I was, why is this here? And I realized it was, it, it was there for the cameos because Sean William Scott and Damon Wayans Jr. have cameos in that scene. Oh, wow. And then later on, they actually call it out and he's like, Oh, he's like, yeah, my dream had Damon Wayans Jr. and, and Stifler in it. Like, that's what he said. Like, <laughs> so, like, they were playing themselves, b- but playing characters in their dreams. <laughs> Which, it sounds funny if I describe it, but if you watch it, you're not going with it. You're not laughing. And then there's a continual joke of Thorny taking uh, women hormone pills to that that help women orgasm and help women like you know get moist and and they change and it changes with his with his body's physiology and stuff and it's a running joke throughout the entire thing and the fact they did that it meant that Thorny wasn't Thorny this entire movie Hmm. it was Thorny as and the worst part is like they are completely antiquated jokes he's a terrible driver now because he's a woman. You know, he's overly oh, irritable because he's a woman. And so it was like, that's that's really childish, even for you guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like painfully, painfully out of touch. Uh, they even have a couple, like, I don't know how to text message on these smartphones, like jokes in it. Oh, my God. And, and th- that was a Brian Cox joke. But still, it's like, I mean, my dad is probably 20 years younger than Brian Cox. But if my dad can learn, a, to learn how to use a smartphone, something tells me Brian Cox, that's- Hannibal Lecter could figure out how to work a cell phone <laughs> it's a joke that only works like seven years ago it works right? in those, it works in those aarp movies right where I like guess. where it's like michael douglas and and morgan freeman robbing casinos or something i don't know like whatever those movies are like it works in those i guess but it doesn't it doesn't really work here it doesn't have a place here and it, those are the, all the jokes that fell flat now there's a lot of things in it that are actually and truly funny and there are callbacks to the first one that don't feel forced they are funny and they belong there and it fits so it's like this weird hodgepodge of like this works that doesn't the whole time so like you're you're scowling for 20 minutes for like a two minute belly laugh and then you're scowling again because you're like i can't believe they're just they're, they're doing this and it's just you know when you think something took 16 years to develop and and these are the guys that created the characters and you know they 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 rewrote things 32 times because they wanted to make the best script they could just don't because i i keep hearing that like they're if this is successful which it was it's technically made its money back yeah it's been successful it has awful it has awful ratings and uh metacritic scores are low as well but they made their money so pot fest is probably going to happen now so they're, they're, that, that, that was what they said. They were going to do Pot Fest again. And if, if they got the money and, and this made money. Oh, that definitely did. And it's still, unfortunately, it will probably continue to make money. I mean, I don't know. Like, does this even like, um, well, see, th- I don't know. Does it speak to a younger crowd? No. Like, no. Oh, boy. No. Okay. This only speaks to all right, so, our generation. So as, uh, j- just as an idea for, for how quickly this film will drop off in the theaters. I went today on Monday, Monday uh, evening. So it was around five o'clock was my showing. I was the only person in the theater until the trailers stopped. And then about like three or four other people trickled in. And what I noticed about everybody who came in there was there was five guys in there. We were all in our early to mid thirties, slightly overweight with beards. <laughs> And it's like, that is Broken Goblet's wheelhouse right there. Slightly overweight with beards. <laughs> Over 30. <laughs> yeah. Because that is their demographic. And that's and that's one of the things that, that I realized that's going to hold something like this back. And it doesn't just hold it back uh, at, fr- from an audience standpoint, you know, w- reaching a broader audience. It holds it back in the fact in, in their own comedy where they can't where they can't really just speak to. You know, it's they're they're funny to a certain sect of of people. It is a ton of of drug dick fart jokes. Like it's a lot of those thrown at you in in an hour and a half. 
and it mm. just depends whether you're able to go along with it. One of the things that bothered me... It's definitely not a theater experience for me. No, I felt like there was far more dick and fart jokes in this one than there were in the original one. Right. I felt the original one had some clever sequences, and especially with the way they fucked with people. They do fuck with people in this movie, but for about maybe a five-minute montage, they fuck with people. So it felt even a little bit disingenuous to its own franchise uh, in that. I know okay. I'm dogging on it a lot. I did enjoy a, a fair bit of my time with it, but there was a lot that I didn't enjoy, I didn't go along with. The best person in the film was Rob Lowe. <laughs> cool. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I'm sure he didn't get paid a lot to do it. But I mean, there's a part where he's he's literally tugging on, on a man's flaccid penis <laughs> and then punching it <laughs> like it's a speed bag. <laughs> Wow. So he plays the mayor. Of- now I definitely want to see it. <laughs> it's pretty big cock, too, Jay. That's kind of funny. You're going to be pretty impressed. <laughs> uh, so he plays like the mayor of a Canadian town that's being absorbed into the United States. He's a former, uh, you know, he's a former Canadian hockey league, uh, like, you know, superstar. And and everybody everybody loves them. And it's a French Canadian town in, in Quebec. So everybody has these terrible French accents like the whole time. And I was like, oh, this is just awful. And yeah, that was a purposeful bad French accent, by the way. Don't think I did a, a, Cana- a but it's Canadian. It doesn't matter, Jay. It Canadian and French accents are even worse. It's They're not even heavier. No, it wasn't. It just was not. It nothing nothing for this movie flowed oh, boy. up and down the shame. whole time. Uh I did enjoy moments of it, so it's going to get just a straight C. Not C+, plus, just a straight C. I'm surprised it's not a C-. minus. No, it's just a C. Okay. I mean, like, I, I did find humor in there, right. and I, I did still enjoy seeing these guys back together. Um, and, you know, it's – it's and like I said, my, my score may come with a little bit of rose-colored Sure. No, I understand that. With yeah, it. definitely. But because Super Troopers 2 is out, I thought this might be a great time for everybody to go over to www.podfixnetwork.com and check out our movie Cocktails because – because we do have a cocktail that is up on uh, on the movie cocktail page on on the Podfix Network website, and it's Thorny's Maple Mustache Ride. Uh, so make sure you head over there and you check that out, especially if you're a bourbon fan. This thing is two ounces of bourbon, one ounce of apple juice, one and a half ounce of maple syrup, two dashes of bitters. Put a cinnamon stick in it, stir it all together with that cinnamon stick, and serve with a whiskey ball. It is absolutely delicious. It's one of the mm-hmm. best drinks we've made. Uh, so since Super Troopers is out, watch the first one again and take a take a swig of that. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> all right, Enjoy Jay. yourselves. Jay, did you watch Westworld this week? I did. I was not impressed with that first episode coming back. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being back in the world, um, but at the same time, I also realized mostly a few things. One, they were certainly um, polishing up loose ends from the previous season, setting up for the next season, and having tons of gory, bloody extras lying dead around. <laughs> but uh, ultimately, I, I you know, I, I, I and also realized this is definitely not going to be even remotely as big of a hit as Game of Thrones. No, I'm okay um, with that. I'm okay with it being a slow burn of a show, because the first season was too. And I realized, like, thinking back about the first episode, the first episode only drew you in with the world, right? It didn't draw you in with any other type of character is, other than the man in black, but you, other but than Do you Harris. care about any, any of the real characters? Like, anybody. Not, not even not real characters, but any character. That's my problem. I, I also realized last night was that I just didn't really care overly about not a single character. Yeah, well, there's not no, really at all because everybody ha- has some serious. Well, because any of these characters know, can change at a, at a moment. Uh, well, true. The, the the human ones, the uh, how are they even call it, um, the hosts. Well, the hosts, yeah. Um, so that's what they I call mean, them in the show. They're hosts. It's it's getting frustrating because you're right. They they are either completely aware or some are not, and they're going to be educated. I guess so. It sounds like. Um, are to, they to be? Because by the ending, there wasn't any of them left. So it's hard to say. <laughs> I, I I don't know exactly what happened. Like I don't know what's going on. And, and, and I guess and, that's what we're going to find and out. And that was purposeful. Right. You know, so. I mean, it's one of the things where they, they, they show you the ending of this season in the first five minutes. And then they, they're going to show you how we got there and how the world's changed and all this other stuff. And I think I think the ride is intriguing. The, the journey we're going to take is going to be intriguing. It's going to be interesting. And it's probably going to be just as fun and thought-provoking as, as the first season. 
But just like Game of Thrones, the first episode back is never a huge episode. Nothing big ever really happens. And right. if you think about the first season, nothing big happened until the final like three probably two episodes of that first season. It was a very slow burn. It was. It, it, was, right. it was a trail of breadcrumbs leading you somewhere, and they're going to do the same thing this season. So I'm intrigued to take that ride with them. Uh, I'm not down on it at all. I just wasn't blown away by anything that I saw. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I still think that I, I thought the effects of that drone were really fucking cool. Those, it was really cool. Huh? I, I thought those I thought those were cool. But I, I am rooting for Bernard. You asked me if I was rooting for anybody. I am rooting for Bernard. You know what? I like Bernard. I like Bernard's story. I like I like where they're going with it. Right. Um, and I like the whole idea of of a host hidden as a mole in the human. Like, I, I like that. And I think definitely Tessa Thompson's character is going to be a big um play a big role this right. this season and there's so. and we've seen so much more going on in the trailers because we see hosts outside in the real world or at least what appears like the real world uh we see we see the former prostitute host uh, i can't remember her 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 name but she we see right. we see a sequence of her in in the east world like in in feudal japan and she's and she's cutting down people with a katana so there's there's things to look forward to. There's going to be more action, and I I still think you know it's it's got it's got legs, and I'm I'm going to be going yeah. with it. Uh, the other the other show I watched was Silicon Valley. I'm all caught up on Silicon Valley okay. season four right now. Fucking enjoying People it. People do love it. Still loving it. Good. So it still cracks me up. It doesn't matter that Ehrlich's gone. Doesn't matter. Uh, that's that. what I, that's what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. It, he he. You realized he added not a whole lot to that show. He added. He was the pot and fart humor. He was just more. He yeah. was just more icing to the cake. Yeah, a little yeah. bit more icing to the but, cake. Yeah. Uh, the, the show is still just as good without him. Yeah. All right. This week we only have three extremely minor news stories to run through. I just think that they're interesting because none of them are DCEU news at all. So I quickly gravitated towards them. <laughs> All right, first off, this comes for out of Universal. There's a new Doom movie in development. No word on writers, directors, stars, or anything, but Universal 1440 is developing a Doom film, which huh. I love the video game Doom. I like the idea of it. I actually don't think the Doom with the rock in it was all that bad. It wasn't great, but it was, wasn't all that bad. There's things to enjoy there. So I'm kind of curious to see what someone does, someone does with the universe. I would like to see a more, a, a far less, you know, polished sheen on it. I want to see like that dark, gritty, like, you know, dark corridors. I hope like, so. A, a far more of a horror feel than the other Doom had. I want to see more of a horror theme going on with it. But you know, we'll follow it as it goes. Maybe one day it'll get a trailer if it if it actually completes its pre its its pre production, and we'll get to talk about it more. Uh, so the MCU is considering doing. I love this considering. So because Avengers Infinity War is about to come out, they don't and and Avengers 4 is looming, they don't they, they have to start putting out news now that lets people know that the Marvel universe is not ending. Right. The well, current phases may be coming to a close. Yeah. Certain actors might be going away, but the MCU is not going it's away. It's a tricky line that they need right. to juggle a little so bit. So they're going to start now trickling out these minor news stories. So Marvel Studios is considering doing a Nova Core Eternals movie. Which is which would be adding to that Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor Ragnarok, cosmic universe of the MCU. Because we've already we've already met the Nova Corps. We met them in in Guardians of the Galaxy one. So this would be basically you know following the the superhero Nova. So uh, no word yet on anything, but uh, Kevin Feige did confirm that they are looking into movies based off of Nova and the Eternals. And then secondly. Marvel Studios boss Kevin Feige uh, was being asked a lot of questions about Namor the Submariner, uh, specifically by IGN. I read a review. Uh, I read an interview on IGN that they did with Kevin Feige, and he was talking. Basically, he's being asked about you know what MCU is doing to acquire the rights to the character. Now, Namor the Submariner is one of Marvel Comics' earliest and oldest properties, and just like the Hulk. Submariner is owned by Universal Studios. 
all the distribution rights are there. But mm-hmm. he has he's he has a very tricky history here because technically he was one of the earliest comics, but he's been retrofitted now to be one of the earliest mutants as well. Mutants falling under Fox, Fox recently acquired by Disney. So people are wondering, do they get the Submariner now? Because he's technically a mutant. But no, uh, like everything else, he is owned by, like, like the Hulk, he is owned by Universal. So the question becomes, you know how do you get him and in what way do you use him and we know that marvel wants to do everything they can to get as many of their character properties back as possible sure of and course. they've and they're, they're, they've gotten pretty close they got there's only a few outliers out there now but the submariner is one of them and they certainly want to do something with well, him. And, and they will close on the fox deal in a year or two probably yeah. so but what i think is interesting is how how would you use the Submariner? Because he's very similar to Aquaman. He he is the king of Atlantis. You know, he, he lives in an underwater world. Well, they're definitely going to wait until the Aquaman comes yeah. out and they're going to see the response. But he's far more of a bad guy. Like, he's more of an anti-hero. He's not on the side of your heroes all the time. He's even been a fantastic... But Aquaman's kind of a bad boy yeah. hero anyway. Right? Only, only in the new revamped version of him. Yeah. That, that, that oh, that's right. He was a weird has. cookie cutter yeah. dude, right? Yeah. So, so Namor is... He, he's been a a foil for the fantastic four several times. So I thought that would be interesting if they got the fantastic four, instead of redoing Dr. Doom right away, if you have the submariner, you do the submariner and bring him in. That would be interesting. I believe Jay, one final bit of news that you brought to my attention. There was leaked footage of venom. We're, from CinemaCon. From CinemaCon. All right. So I, I I did a little bit of digging and I did find the 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 leaked the, the leaked video. Uh, I'll play the audio for you. It's only eight seconds. We are Venom. So what it shows is Tom Hardy's Venom actually like putting on the mask uh, like the 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 symbiote takes him over and it it's very cool how they how they did it the teeth come up from under his chin and form the bottom jaw as the top of the head comes over like a hood with teeth and then closes around him and then when he starts talking when he's done talking that giant venom tongue comes out which is everything that sam raimi's venom lacked in spider-man 3 yeah it was all there and it looks it looks fantastic Fantastic. Um, I'm kind of blown away, to and, be honest. I think it's really, really good looking. And one of the things I really like about it is, and it's another thing that they didn't do in Sam Raimi's uh, Spider-Man, which is another thing that ruined Venom. He says, we are Venom, implying that the symbiote and him are one organism, that they 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 think in tandem, that they work together. Right. So I, I really dig that because that is very something that is Eddie Brock from the comics. That is that is very you know very roots to what the character was. Great, and I love it. And he obviously has this this criminal on the ground, and he's you know, by his screams, you know, Venom. It, it has like a little bit of a horror element to it. It right? does. It does. I, I mean, that, that's really good. I mean, and it's actually necessary because i think anybody would act that way if you came across somebody like that absolutely it's really it's really cool footage um i it's a great teaser i'm surprised you know? i'm surprised it, it hasn't been pulled down yet don't, they, don't you don't you think it's like something like it you remember like how it oh, when yeah. that first came out like that, that, that i don't know what it was the image the first image or the first little um voice or or something all of a sudden Internet went, internet went crazy. Everybody was all about this movie, was so excited about this film project coming out. And this was months beforehand. And this is the same thing right now with this uh, property yeah. as well. If they leak that, well, even it, it is leaked. But like w- once word gets out and But it hasn't it does, been taken down but yet. But when it does, well, maybe not. Mm, That's what I'm, I'm thinking. It's just I'm, enough to get I'm, people excited. I'm thinking though. there's another trailer imminent, which oh, is why it's not been taken down. It's going to come This out. Friday, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. Infinity War. That'd be exciting. Yeah, I think so too. But it's 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 intriguing footage. I will try to remember to put a to put the link to it in the uh, description of the episode. So coming up next, me and Jay got our beer reviews along with our MCU drunk scene. So stay tuned. <laughs> All 
All right, me and Jay got two craft beers that we're going to review for you. But before we get into that, it's time to pay the bills. Our craft beer review segment is sponsored by Blowfish. Blowfish is the only hangover remedy that is recognized by the FDA to actually be medicine for hangovers. So that is right there means it's spectacular it's actually been proven to work (laughs) it comes with a money-back guarantee and within 15 minutes you feel relief after taking it you just take two tablets you drop them into the glass after they've dissolved you drink that glass of water down and you feel amazing after that all the fogginess goes away the headache starts to go away and the best part is it doesn't just work for hangovers if you have a headache like one of those headaches that's been hanging on and you just can't get rid of you can actually take blowfish for that too so for less than a dollar twenty-five a dose, you can cure the 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 one thing that's been ailing mankind since alcohol was created. A lot cheaper than greasy food. The hangover. <laughs> <laughs> so if you head over to fourhangovers.com, that's F-O-R hangovers.com, and use the promo code SMB Fish when you check out, you can get your 15% off of this amazing product that was developed specifically to help you, the drinker. <laughs> All right, Jay, like always, we have a drunk scene to get into. And like we've been doing all month, of course, it is another MCU drunk scene. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to exit the donut. I told you I don't want to join your super secret boy band. (laughs) No, no, no. See, I, I, I remember you do everything yourself. How's it working out for you? It's, 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 it's. I'm sorry, I don't want to get off on the wrong foot. Do I look at the patch or the eye? Yeah. Honestly, I'm a bit hungover. I'm not sure if you're real or if, if I'm having to lyric. I am very real. I'm the realest person you're ever going to meet. Just my luck. Where's the oh, staff here? That's not looking so good. Been worse. We've secured the perimeter, but I don't think we should hold it for too much longer. Huh. You're a fired. That's not up to you. <laughs> and uh, I chose this one because since Blowfish is now our sponsor, this is Tony Stark with a hangover. We've done we've done Tony Stark fighting Rhodey before, uh, when he gets really drunk at his at his birthday party. Yeah. Uh it, it's you know, one of those scenes where it's it's funny, but it's also Tony dealing with the grips of reality of the fact that he's dying. And he's pretty sure that's the last birthday he's ever going to have. Uh, and being the man child that he is, he doesn't quite know how to deal with that. But uh, I love the next morning scene where he's sitting in the giant donut and he's just completely hung over and he's got a he's got a box of a dozen in front of him and he's just chowing down on donuts when Nick Fury shows up. And um, I, I, I like this scene where they're in the diner. What I don't like is everything that happens after this for this film, though. I can't stand the fact that Tony Stark's dad just pretty much put a deus ex machina in a box to solve all of Tony's problems. <laughs> a little too convenient. Yeah, a little too, a little too convenient. A little too convenient that Nick Fury was aware of it and, <laughs> and, and put it out there. Why wouldn't Nick Fury just be like, hey, man, in there. We, our scientists figured it out years ago. You're going to do it right now, though. You're, you're a pioneer. Don't worry about it. Like I've just felt like Nick Fury knew the whole time that the answer was in that box. I just don't. I don't know, man. I just, uh, but other than that, I, I really, it enjoyed... wasn't the best sequence. No. no, no, but I really enjoyed just the post hangover scene right there. Of Maybe course. if Tony Stark had a little bit of blowfish, he, he could have, uh, he should have, he could have cleared that haze. <laughs> Maybe gotten his suit back before Rhodey sold it to the U S exactly. government. All right, Jay, you got a beard that you're going to be reviewing. What is the beard you got, man? I have heavy seas cutlass. It's a Vienna style lager. And it is 5.4 alcohol by volume. It is brewed with pale crystal Vienna and Munich malts. Uh, it's a amber lager that's extremely like a uh, smooth. You know, has a little bit of a toasted um, note to it, but it mostly overall has a real malty kind of flavor, and it's it's rather well balanced and. Just very drinkable. Um, it's, it's nothing, it's, it's not my favorite. It's, it's just a good, solid, well rounded beer. Um, I would still give this a 3.5. I think it's, it's, it's great. And, you know, what's really cool about this company is also that a portion of, 
uh, their proceeds goes to the clean water organization. So cool, which is great. Jay, you would describe both of our beers as pretty much banal. That's your favorite word, right? right? Banal, banal, because <laughs> they both come from from rather well known breweries. Uh, we we're, we're not going deep cuts with our uh, with our local brews or anything like that. I am drinking the Magic Hat. TFG that's taken for granted IPA. This is an IPA that they worked on for years at, uh, at Magic Hat, according to them. And it, uh, has, it's got a nice, you know, malty like back end, you know, like not so bitter as you would expect with a lot of IPAs. It's actually, it's actually a lot more darker in flavor towards the back end of the flavor with that, with that malt, but it has that, that juicy, IPA, you know, hop up front. And it also, you know, you can definitely taste grapefruit, orange. Um, you know, you get a lot of citrus fruit in there when, when you drink it. I, I, I like it a fair bit. We were drinking these yesterday at Logan's, uh, at Logan's birthday party. And this is the last one. So that's why I wanted to review it because everyone really enjoyed it so much. I wanted to take the time to like actually sit down and drink it, not like in less of like a social setting and just kind of like taste it. And it is, it is really good. It's just not wow. You know, like it's very drinkable, but it's not wow. Right, right. So I think along with you, yeah, I'm like a 3.5 on it. Okay. It's, it's just when you. It's a good beer. It's when you read, nothing. when you read on the, on the, on the label that it took them 15 years to develop. Well, you're, you're expecting wow. You right? are. And maybe they just gave up <laughs> after 15 years. Just They're like, like, you know what? Just this is as good as we can get it, I think. I think that's exactly. Put it out there. You know, j- just like my broken, my broken lizard super troopers two review. <laughs> 15 years is the best uh, we could do. This, I this, guess. this is what we got, you know? I guess. Just put it out there. Slap a label on it and get it out there somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's making its money already. So for better or worse, those are the beers that we're drinking this week. Make sure that you do head over to fourhangovers.com. Get yourself some blowfish and make sure that you cure those hangovers by using the promo code SMBFISH. Coming up next, I am joined by John from Now in Technicolor for our final MCU lightning round. So welcome back to our Marvel Cinematic Universe look back. We are tonight going to be getting into phase three of the Marvel Universe, and I am joined by John from Now in Technicolor. John, how are you doing tonight? Like I said, not too bad, man. Doing great. I have thoroughly enjoyed being on for the last two of these and looking forward to uh, get into what is uh, the most recent and possibly best phase of the Marvel scene of it. Uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. There we go. At the very least, it is the most recent one. So all of these films are pretty (laughs) fresh in our minds. Uh, And uh, that's... uh, But there also is some extreme standouts in in this one. And I think this is... uh, You know, when we talk about Marvel Phase 2, we talked about some of the pitfalls that Phase 2 had. You know, especially early Mm -hmm. on, right? I I felt like they were still trying to find their voice after they they did Avengers. They weren't really sure where they were going to go. And then somewhere around uh winter soldier and guardians of the galaxy i think they refound what the marvel universe is going to be moving forward and then we get into phase three and it's that fully realized direction now uh and Mm -hmm. uh, they're kind of knocking it out of the park with with i would say possibly maybe one minor misstep uh in, in the films so uh unfortunately we are not joined by wes tonight wes uh was we had some scheduling conflict we were unable to get wes on so this last round is just going to be john and myself so we're gonna me and john are gonna be switching on and off uh i'm actually going to start off with civil war and then by that end john should w- w- end up with black panther uh that's so- right so let's get let's get started here. I will start the timer as we've been doing five minutes for each film in phase three. So Captain America Civil War, which is the Avengers film that is not titled Avengers. I mean, everybody in the MCU who had been in the MCU up to this point showed up in this film. 
all of the major except heroes were here. Except for Hulk. Except for Hulk and 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 Thor. Um, yes. And and that was a purposeful thing. They were both kept out of this because of their power level. Uh, if either of them were to join one side or the other, it would really offset the balance. And the whole point was to make these teams feel balanced, not just not just power level wise, but 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 politically, you know, you know, it, with 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 the way they they kind of fall in line, um, it, you know, with with their characterization and everything like that. So, um, yeah. uh, the, the, with the outlier being Peter Parker, he's kind of just more of a of a fanboy of Tony Stark. So it's why he and Tony Stark asked him. I'm sure if Captain America showed up at that house in Queens and asked, he would have joined him. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it was just more of a who got there first kind of yeah. deal, and because he was just a generally he was a fan of all of the heroes and uh it was more and at the same time it was also the introduction of spider-man into this actual extended universe as as far as all of the storylines go so my big takeaway from this one was that iron man no longer making weapons still making bad choices um but it you know it was it was divided <sighs> right like uh, there were people who were on iron man's side like viewers like us fans there were people who were on iron man's side saying like yeah, I mean they, they they should become regulated. They were regulated once the Avengers when they were under Shield until Shield went under in uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier, and and now they're not they're not legitimized. They're basically their own police force protecting the world. And Tony kind of sees the flaw in that. Uh, I wasn't crazy about in the film the way they brought up that flaw when like the woman just kind of like shanghai's him in front of the elevator and she's like, "That's my son." Yeah, he died I there. Was, I wasn't That's your really fault. He big goes, about oh, that. yeah." I mean, the Stanford incident that happened in the comics probably would have been far more powerful um, if you just kind of had like the Stanford incident being the first five minutes of the film or something yeah, that akin to that, or at least show show footage back from Sokovia and showing that young man dying, right? Or showing like the mass destruction that happened, which leads us to the Sokovia Accords. But one of the things that, that that's positive that I really take away is is we now realize where Cap sees himself in the world now. You know, Cap sees himself as as not just a soldier for to protect the country, to protect good. He sees himself now as as a political crusader, as a man who stands up for the ideals that he believes in, whether that means he wears the stars and stripes or not. He's a man that stands up for what he believes in, um, regardless of what the rest of the world thinks of him. And I, I absolutely love that, you know, because I feel like in the first Avengers, I'm sorry, in the first Captain America movie, mm -hmm. You know, if you know, if if he didn't agree with what was going on in World War II, he might have sucked it up under orders, right? But oh yeah, definitely. In this one, damn orders, damn damn what they're saying. Like I know what's right, and I, I'm going to do it. And to him, Bucky was just as much of a victim as as anybody else that had been that had been you know tampered with by Hydra. So uh, I, I really really enjoyed that. But more than anything. 20 minutes at the airport biggest fight scene that's ever happened in, in comic book history that's where this film comes together that's where this film that, lies. that is really the culmination of the whole film when you come down to it where i mean that fight scene is just so fantastic once you get everybody all together and they're they're all finally going at each other and just to see everything play out oh yeah is is so well done uh the the fight I sequence is, is so like played out well and like you said i mean not and only everybody has have, their moment everybody <clears throat> has their moment yeah everybody has their moment and not only well i mean not only do you have the realization of um you know captain america and just him finally kind of coming into his, his his self and realizing where he stands and all this but you also have uh you know start kind of realizing more of the politicalness yeah. of his, his own side to where like it, it not only not always does it have to be him you know blasting you know his blasters or, or flying around but to, to realize that you know maybe sometimes some of this stuff can be taken uh, solved by words yeah. less more he, action. he realizes he has real world influence more mm -hmm. so than just the character persona that he's put a, he's put forth to the world um one of the things that i love the most is the relationship between sam wilson and bucky barnes uh <laughs> yes i absolutely love i actually love them back and forth um and then finally the the final scene man just 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 the, the that final fight between between uh winter soldier captain america and iron man uh 
I, I, I love the way it came together. I, I, I love the way that, you know, Zemo in the end won. I mean, I, I you know, he, he won, he tore apart the Avengers and that's all he set out to do. He, he knew he couldn't kill them all, but he stopped them but from he, being the Avengers. But he believed that he could at least hinder yeah. them yeah. in the end, uh, just by tearing the team apart a, a, as a whole. And then at the same time, I mean, one of the most captivating lines in that is, is literally the, well, he's my friend. So well, was I. I was your friend too. Yeah. You know? And we saw in, in Avengers uh, Age of Ultron, they were good friends. Like they kept having that back and forth about Thor's hammer, right? Like does, you know, if, if the, if the hammer's in an elevator, does the elevator go up? Hammer's not, you know, elevator's not worthy. Mm-hmm. Like they had this back and forth. They were friends. They were buddies. Yeah. They were, they were damn good friends. And they now they're they not. really kind of come together. It's just one of those things where it's, as it is, like you said, Cap has a realization of the fact that like Bucky literally has been just as much of a victim of Hydra and that, you know, he, he didn't really set out for all the things that had happened to him or that he did and and that he doesn't really deserve right to, to be shut down in, in such a way and that he, he's just trying to save someone that has was his friend as, as a boy. It'll be interesting to see how they pick up their relationship with Iron Man and Captain America and and the Winter Soldier when we get into Avengers Infinity War. John, the next film is up to you because that is time. We actually ran over oh, uh, damn. a little bit and we are now on Doctor Strange. All right. So Doctor Strange, the introduction of Dr. Stephen Strange. Benedict uh, Cumberbatch. (laughs) Oh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Into the actual uh, catch, whatever, you know. Into the Marvel Cinematic Universe of uh, the introduction of his character and and just the snarkiness uh, and conceitedness of the fact that this is a man that has spent his entire life not only being intelligent, but uh, believing that he is almost godlike in the sense that he, he can control whether someone lives or dies just by the simple essence of uh, his surgical use throughout the film. And then when he finally loses the use of his hands, him having to come to realizations with his own just nothingness and then to try to build that back up uh, with realizing that there's more to the world than just what the eye can see for me this is the weakest point in marvel phase three um it you know i one of my biggest problems is the way they start dr strange off is that his character is very similar to tony stark he's very he's very uh he's very sure of himself he's very sure of his of his prowess uh at what he does he's very smart he's very intelligent uh and he treats other people like shit uh until until he gets humbleized until until you know his hubris yeah until he's humbleized with the with with the the hands (laughs) thing and then having to try to figure out how to possibly there is a change in his character and by the end he is very different than tony stark uh you know how he handles his new powers is completely I mean, different is, than iron and man i mean i can agree with you about the way that he starts off, starts as, off as tony yeah, stark first act. but but it, it's one of those things that doctor strange as a whole i feel like they encompass the original doctor strange like that though because doctor strange originally was a pompous asshole and they definitely played homage to like the 70s comics with the visuals and stuff like that like they really went there for some of that stuff they really got into the whole into the whole acid age <laughs> like they got they really yes. got into like to, oh yes. to like the, the way of those looks and stuff but one of the things that like that really bothered me was it wasn't so much doctor strange as much or the story or the villain or anything it was the humor I felt like in this one, the humor lacked, uh, not that it wasn't there. It was there, but what was there felt so forced and so slapsticky that I just, I, I didn't go with that, but I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing Maz Mickelson, but at the same time, I was not floored by Mads Mickelson. And I believe me, it's tough to, to not be floored by Mads Mickelson. Like I, you know, casino Royale fantastic yeah. villain i mean Casino it's Royale. another one of those situations where Hannibal, i don't feel like so they good. really gave him enough no they didn't i really don't think they gave him they enough didn't. to do with the actual script because they were trying to focus so much on strange but it had some it, awesome shocking moments like the ancient one just falling and in, in that wet like crunching slap as she hits the ground and like whoosh, yeah like oh I, well, love I mean, that. the visuals of the movie are fantastic. Like oh, that, yeah. that, 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 that's, that can never be taken away. Like it, it's got some of the best visuals, uh, out of any of the movies, it like just as far as has 
a, a, a resolution that I absolutely love. Like it's almost like the Gardens of the Galaxy dance off that we talked about in the last episode, where it ends in quite a way that that isn't very expected. There's no big fight, right? He literally wears Dormammu down by showing up over and over and over and over and over well, again. And we this, have no and clue. This is how where long, we mentioned, right? And this is no where we mentioned about the humility that. that has has right. entered. In, in, into into this character and has actually changed him to the point that literally he beats the enemy by using humility by using and the ability to just yeah. just say fuck it i'd rather die a million times than allow you to destroy this to yeah. destroy this world uh, and, and, I, and i also love the you know the just the way he he winds up ending that whole thing just 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 the way he 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 basically appeals to Dormammu's not not better nature, but his his more his more selfish nature, where it's like we can do this for all of eternity, but really I'm not going to stop. You're not going to stop. Which one of us is going to find Dormammu? Whatever, I'm done. He he beats him <laughs> with a stalemate <laughs> essentially. Done. Yeah, he just beats him with a stalemate where it's like, look, we can do this for forever. Like you said, I mean, it it, it, it we, just comes down to the fact that it, he literally put him in such a situation that they were stuck so I, it was like you you either listen to what i've got to say or we'll just yeah. continue to do this i loved the ending that that was my favorite part of it and that's what winds up saving the film for me was the fact that it didn't become it didn't become a knockout drag out brawl but that's not the type of character that stephen strange is it's also interesting to mention that it's the uh final infinity stone that will show up in the marvel universe before we get to Avengers Infinity War. The Time Stone appears uh, as which is the yep. center of the eye of Agamotto. All right, and that's going to do it for well, I, I don't know, have we have we gotten to the Soul Stone? I don't think we've gotten to the Soul, Soul Stone. Soul Stone is the only one that's left. All right, now it's time to get into the next film which is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And I'll be honest with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I absolutely fell in love with it the first time i saw this when i was in the theaters i was cracking up god i loved i loved the music again i loved you know uh starting off with mr blue sky um i i just loved baby Groot dancing i loved i loved the fight i loved the humor um and then you know i even enjoyed like the whole back and forth between peter and ego and finding out he's his father and I, I went with a lot of the characterizations. Now, when I watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, I still love it. I still laugh at it. I still have a good time with it. When I watch Guardians Volume 2, not so much anymore. I'll be honest. Like, it, it doesn't hold up in the same way uh, for some reason. I don't know whether it's because it's a tired formula or whether it's because they just didn't bring it like they did the first time. It, it might be because it's not fresh and new like it was the first time we saw it. But it doesn't hold up for me, especially especially like I find Drax to be less funny. Like he was great in the first one and this one a, a little bit less so. Um, I, also, I also found Peter to be far more annoying this time around. And Baby Groot was just too much of that film was just Baby Groot. Just too much of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you. Like, the first time I watched Guardians 2, like, it, it was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. And then upon, like, the second and third viewing, I was like, I don't know if I like this as much. I don't feel like it holds up as, as well as the first one does. And, uh, well, I mean, you know, some of it, I think, is, like you said, I think, you know, Peter is a little bit more... I hate to use the word whiny in it, but he seemed he's a little bit more whiny in the in this one than he was in the first one. Uh, and then a lot of it, yeah, is Groot. And plus, you have the dynamic where they split the team up. Yeah, which kind of which kind of like that, well, took that away it. from a little bit it of did. it, and and, and really kind of kind of weakened the film quite a bit. And then don't don't get me wrong, I really like the storyline with Yondu, but by the second or third view by the time he he gets to to his line that final line with uh with peter i'm just like okay they they kind of drove this into you the whole film yeah yeah that he is the father figure which is something they set up in the first one and it made sense but like they they really hammered that nail home a lot towards the end and i was like yeah i get it dude i get it yeah i'm there i I'm, i was with you <laughs> but now that you're mentioning it so much like it, it's like calm down 
Calm down a little bit. I get it, man. I, I got it. All right. I, I'm, I'm sad. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sad I mean, too. Even I'm then, sad like, too. <laughs> I'm sad too. It, you know, like that. But I, I feel like it, by that point in time, he could have just said the he's not he wasn't your father thing, yeah. and then just gone on with like a stern look or meaningful look between the two of them, and it was just a, a an understanding less than him actually having to state it. Yeah, and 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 for me. One of the things that was a big strength in the film, though, was Gamora and Nebula's uh, relationship. I absolutely yeah, love that. I really did like the the growth between their actual relationship and, okay. and just the understanding between each one of them so, uh, point of view as, as to the way their childhoods were. And it's the Marvel film that has the most post credit scenes, which I <laughs> I did love. <laughs> I did love all of them. I loved the yeah, Stan Lee yeah. talking to the Watchers because that was the big fan theory, right? Was that Stan Lee's the Watcher. He's the Watcher. That's the whole point of this. He's the one yep. that shows up and all. And it turns out he's not the Watcher. He's the Watcher for the Watchers. <laughs> yep, he's the Watcher for the Watchers, which which was pretty damn good. Yeah, I, uh, I really the, enjoy, I like the Baby Groot thing where it's like, you know, clean up your room. You got vines everywhere. I am Groot. And he gives him like that sarcastic I am Groot. And I was like, oh, all right. I, I get that. But yeah, then, old teenage Groot and shit. Uh, that, that was that was really good. I, but I don't know. And although I love Kurt Russell, don't get me wrong, I love Kurt Russell, and it's not that I really dislike Ego. It's just by the end of it, when he's just the planet, I'm like, this is this is yeah. not as solid an ending as the first one. It just it's not as no because it was a fight, right? Like the first yeah, one it was bucked an the system fight. by not having a major fight like that, and this one did. Like th- he had a knockout drag out brawl with the guy, you know, he, he, he didn't beat him with his humor or with his, you know, with his charm, like he did with, uh, with Ronan. And I mean, where they tried to add the humor into that was where he kept making the shit that like he said he wanted to make right, when he could figure right. out the powers, you know, the like Pac-Man, the giant Pac-Man made, uh, thing. Yeah. I mean, and it just, it wasn't as strong. It just, it wasn't, it just strong. wasn't, but I, I still enjoy it when I watch it. Um, I, I, I will, you know, I'll, I'll watch it again before Avengers infinity war comes up and that's going to do it for guardians 2 so uh i'm coming back in for spider-man homecoming which i'm going to be honest for me is a lot like a doctor strange i felt like except the opposite i felt like the character was done so right and i felt like they found the right actor tom tom holland's uh, tom holland is fantastic um his Spider-Man and his Peter Parker are, are both great. Uh, I love Michael Keaton, and I love him in the villain role. However, I didn't love his villain or his portrayal of it, but I just love Michael Keaton. I don't know what it is about him. I just I just like the way he talks. You know, I mean, uh, Michael Keaton's got that voice that just makes you melt like butter. But for me, the story was was pretty weak. I'll be honest. Like I I wasn't crazy about the story, and one of my big problems with it was, and everyone always tells me it's because. He's a teenager. He's growing. He's learning. You have to, you know, give him this first time out before he learns like a real lesson and blah blah blah. It's all about screwing up and faking all it right, to well, make it. Uh, and for right, me, it's thing. like here's the thing. I got. Man. I, I had a big problem with Spider Man failing all the time. Even in his final fight, he fails <sighs> and and gets right, lucky so, winning. So here's here's the thing about that. I really enjoyed the fact that they actually made him an actual teenager this time. And like he's a legitimate teenager, uh, played by that uh, by Tom Holland and stuff. So that much I appreciated. I appreciated the fact that they didn't give you another origin story, like an actual origin yeah. story for Spider Man. Well, they uh, did it through, I mean, they did running, it through exposition. It's been the ground. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, they did it, it through exposition. He explained but the like net. you said, it, he was it doesn't really add up with the idea. With the, the, a lot of the problem with the story is your is, is exactly that that saying oh he's got to have his first time out and he's got to you know learn to fail a little bit and he fails way too much he does and this isn't spider-man's first time out everyone reminds me that it's a coming of age story right it's it's a john hughes film it's a coming of age story and i was like for me i was like he didn't come of age though until the very end when he gets offered the new suit and a spot on the avengers and he turns it down i was like that was his coming of age moment. It didn't come during any of his fights, and it didn't come nope. any at, at any time, you know, until the very final scene of the film. And for me, I felt like that that was to its detriment. Like I wanted to see him at some point just stand but up it, and it, say, it, like, it, it, I I am, you know, I am responsible for this. Like it, it is my duty. Like I am, you know. Uh, just, and that much, I mean, that much is is appreciated. That much is, is actually 
pretty good as as far as like that coming of age point but you know like i said the first time out thing really bothered me through the entire film just because of the fact i'm like okay this is spider-man by the time he's made it to the avengers he's done notable things out as spider-man to make tony even recognize him and come try to get him Because at this point, I mean, by the time he got to the Vulture, I mean, this isn't his first time out. At this point, he should have at least faced the Green Goblin. No, I mean, they explained that. His first time out really was Civil War. And then everything else has just been doing good deeds for people and reporting back to Happy. And and I don't like that. I mean, I just, I don't like the way that that's that's done. that's actually one of the things I did kind of like. I like the whole reporting to Happy. I like the whole, like, Happy's just like, whatever, fuck you, kid. Like, (laughs) I really enjoyed that stuff. Um, Yeah, no, that's, that, 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 you know, that's, that's pretty funny. I'll be honest. I mean, I had my funnest time with this film in the, in the beginning when, you know, when, when he's, when he's, playing avenger and stuff like that and he's dealing with happy in the hotel room and stuff like that and when he's in school like i really enjoy that stuff most of the stuff with spider-man i actually wasn't enjoying that much it was it was tom holland and peter that i was really enjoying i just felt like i felt like you know well well, him as peter is is fantastic yeah i mean he's a great peter and and you know i I just I'm looking forward to the next time out with him to see what they bring to the table to see to see how they've grown him. I mean, even in Avengers Infinity War, I'm looking forward to see how, how they grow him. I don't like the outfit in Avengers Infinity War, but well, we'll we'll talk about that later because yeah. <laughs> what they're gonna do with that. And I was like, I kind of don't want to see that. And then they're like, that. Well, this is what we're gonna do. And I went, oh well, oh, damn. Yeah, well, you went full Iron Spider, didn't you? But yeah, yeah I mean, for for me, it's I I really do enjoy so much about spider-man homecoming i know we talked about a lot of the negative but um it 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 really winds up being just that that film that like i just i feel like the 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 hero wasn't strong at least the hero aspect of him wasn't so strong but you know him as 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 the kid as peter was was absolutely fantastic and i will say this that it is the most mcu film uh out there because it has more references than any of the other ones combined i swear like, oh it does so it many does. of because they wanted to remind you that even though sony you know columbia pictures was at the beginning of this it is still an mcu film and they had to remind you of that oh yeah and we are out of time on that one and so, i know i sounded like i was giving it a lot of a hard time but i do actually enjoy oh the no film. yeah i same here i enjoy the film so much it's just that Honestly, if I had to put Spider-Man Homecoming versus Spider-Man 2 by Sam Raimi, I still pick Spider-Man 2 by Sam Raimi. Yeah. Over I, I, I got to go with you. Got to go with you. John, it's to you, my friend. Right, so for- now I'm going to take up Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok, buddy. Oh, man. So a glorious reintroduction of Thor into the actual Marvel Universe with this film. Um, just the way that they bring him in, they can continue to give him just that final bit of character growth into it. Yeah. And actually work in Loki to an extent where you kind of round his character out, uh, by the end of it, where he's not just so much the evil bastard that like they, they've tried to, to, you know, he's not so much just bad. You finally get this whole thing with him where he's not just bad, but he is actually still good. But it's like, a, a but he is exactly the God that he's supposed to be, which is the God of mischief. And the introduction of like the actual uh, goddess of death. I've, love that and of course jeff goldblum is grandmaster is is just fucking fantastic just the 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 subtle nuance of that character all the way through is is great uh because when you get jeff goldblum jeff goldblum's gonna jeff goldblum (laughs) oh he jeff goldblum's it up so hard one of the things that help but love it i love about the film like other than korg because we all love korg piss off ghost korg is great (laughs) dude korg is so great (laughs) piss off ghost (laughs) uh but but shit he's gone but, but but other than that like i mean i just love the 
I, I love the humor and I love the fact that this is our first time with Thor in two years. And it's also our first time with the uh, Hulk. With the Hulk, which S- is with Hulk, since which Ultron. Is the thing that I loved the most. Like the way they used the Hulk. Like we know we can never get a Hulk solo film because Universal still holds the distribution rights for a Hulk solo mm. film. Um, but I, I, I just loved like when the Hulk showed up, even though we knew it was coming in the trailers, I loved Loki's reaction to it. Like when the Hulk busts out and he's like, Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, oh, shit, I got to get off this planet. <laughs> and, um, and Goldblum's like, hey, hey, where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> I, 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 It's some of that stuff that I loved. It was the balance of the humor with the action. The, I mean, I think the only thing that I was a little, I was a little remiss about was like, I didn't really feel too many like emotional moments in it where like i i should have like i i really wish they sold that whole brotherhood between him and loki uh loki comes around in the end but i don't feel like they sold it hard enough i don't feel like they sold the fact that like thor's dad just died at the beginning of yeah this. i don't feel like they sold it enough because they kind of cut off the the whole thing with him and loki there right after right. odin died uh, yeah. a little too short and then uh, when they try to talk about it later i feel like it gets a little cut off i feel like every time that they started to really work on that particular relationship they cut it just a little short yeah i mean and and that that's honestly my only knock on the film is that like I don't feel like Thor's the type of guy who just lost someone important to him. You know, other than that, though, I mean, we could always write that off as their Asgardian. So, you know, well, I mean, some of it's like I said, I, they just don't give you enough time for processing uh, of right after his dad died and everything. Because then exactly like it. literally yeah. just a few moments later, boom, here comes here comes Helene. Um, Hella. What was her damn name? Hella. Uh, Helena. Hella. Hella. Yeah, yeah, hella. Uh, they got it, like she's moments later. You know, boom, she's there. One of the other things I didn't like was the Warriors Three that have been in both films now just yeah die. Like it, when when Hella shows up in in Asgard and the Warriors Three are are inside the room where she appears uh, at and the she end of the ends Amber- to kills them. It was exactly like when Kit Fisto and Mace Windu take on <laughs> take on Emperor Palpatine and just get cut down so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, literally, I, w- I would have liked to see more actual fight out of that and uh, maybe actually seen a little bit more resistance from it as, as a little less just insta dying. I mean, it was but, meant to show you like how powerful she yeah, was, was but at the, same, the time, same thing, it's service to just basically kill off characters that, that I found interesting in other Thor films. Um, I did love the ending. Like, I love the way that that Thor was basically had to let, allow Ragnarok to, to go. But I also love the fact that Idris Abba with that long hair. Fuck, he's sexy. Oh, man. God, he's fuck so he's- sexy. <laughs> God <laughs> damn sexy. it, man. I don't care how he looks. He is a, that is a sexy man. So, positives of Thor Ragnarok. The humor. <laughs> Korg. Yes. The Hulk. And sexy Idris Abba. <laughs> sexy Idris Abba. It of is- course... Of course, the thing we mentioned about the Hulk is like this is the closest thing to a Planet Hulk movie you will ever get. You'll ever get. That's a hundred percent true, and uh, I, I'm okay with that. I love the little Easter eggs too. I love the fact that Better Ray Bill's face was on the outside of the uh, Grandmaster's uh, of, of of his Skyrise. Yes, that yes. was amazing. And uh, John, that is time. So That's final time. final film of Marvel oh, Phase hell. Three going black panther black panther black man panther. It's the most recent so, one obviously but uh yep. just did a review uh, for it but let's, let's let's talk about it man what you got for it all right so black panther we have the actual full-on introduction of back black panther into the mcu minus what we got for uh civil war we get the actual storyline for what happened with um him right after civil war after the death of his father and his introduction to becoming king and the growth of not only just learning, thinking that everything that he has grown to know through his life is the way everything should be, but to learn the diversities of the fact that they should help other people. One of the things I loved about Black Panther um, was not Black Panther himself. And I've said this several times on the show, but it was the other characters around him. Uh, that I wound up loving, you know, I, I love, I love Denai Guerrera uh, as his like bodyguard. I love the girl who played his little sister. Um, and, and it's kind of like his science, his tech officer, his Q. Yeah, that was great because the way I saw Black Panther while watching it and I was like, he's James Bond. 
Like he, yeah, is, essentially, he, uh, he, is, he is he is African James Bond for Christ's sakes, was, and that was one of the cool things I thought about it. Like I thought that it, that like the technology was was great. Um, I don't think they explained the use of vibranium too much. Happen. Like I found vibranium to be uh, very, you know, its uses were were so overwhelmingly uh, applicable to so many to so many different situations that that bothered me a little bit. But I mean, other than that, like I I really enjoyed the film, and I loved the, the film's message like i love the film's political message where it's just like you know you you, you fix the world by helping you don't fix the world by by fighting it's wrong warring you f- yeah right. you don't yeah. i mean like it, it's one of those things where it comes down to the fact that like look i mean you can you can try to take things by by force but in the end you're not going to actually fix the problem and i don't know if you agree with me or not but best marvel villain since loki oh fuck yeah yeah Michael B. Fuck Jordan. Yeah. Michael I, B. Jordan as Killmonger was possibly one of the great, yeah, the best fucking Marvel villain since Loki. Out of the Oh my fucking God, did park. he do such a great job? Knocked it out of the park. And and that, that was one of the things that I really took away from it was like, man, that, that guy's acting was on point. Like he was, he, he so embodied the character that they developed there. Uh, and, you know, Ryan Coogler, the, the director, had, had, directed him before in creed and in fruitvale station which are you know yeah. huge movies and, and fruitvale again, station is one of my another favorite guy that the, another guy that was in an a marvel movie years before that or you know before that that played the just, same just character two years that, before that and yeah just flopped. two years before that that played the same character that we had the same problem with chris evans in totally total redemption inside the mcu yeah. uh as a film character i mean and i, I said it before for, and I'll definitely say it again. The way they did it is was so well done that he was perfectly the yang to the yin of Black Panther. Like they were exactly two sides of one coin. Absolutely, and a great villain is always the dark mirror image of of your hero, and that's exactly what Killmonger was. He was the he mm-hmm. was the mirror image, the dark image of of Black Panther, and. But I, I also love the way that Black Panther, in some ways, subverted expectations. You know, like you expected the, you know, you expected the guy who played the uh, the, the white ape. Like you expected him to be to, to kind of align himself with Killmonger, but it doesn't. You know, he aligns himself with his country, with his people, and 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 he respects his king. He respects the processes and stuff like that. I also, you know, I, I just absolutely loved. Uh, <laughs> I loved Andy Serkis. Uh, I, as, yeah, Andy Serkis oh, was great. Oh man, that was awesome. In his interrogation scene when he starts singing, I was just <laughs> I was just dying laughing. I absolutely loved it. I there's just there there was so much to love here. I, I felt like it was the best Marvel solo film that they had done. Like the best the best origin story, pretty much. Like the, the first time solo out story that they had done. Mm-hmm. They, they they knocked it out of the park. I and I, I went into it with very few preconceived notions as well, because Black Panther for a lot of people is not a very well known character, you know? Oh, he's not. No, for a lot of people he's not a well known character. His his solo at all. books were not were not well read. Like there's not a lot of people reading the solo books. What the, the what knowledge of Black Panther that people have comes from his stint with the with the Fantastic Four and his time spent with the avengers and that's and that's really it other than that you know that yep. no one knows a whole lot about him so they uh, had a blank and, and slate the thing to is, work i with. know so i know some guys that i know a couple old old comic heads that were very familiar with black panther that did have some issues with the film just based on i didn't i, th- I felt they, like they paid homage based to on black their Pan- whole thing but uh, i mean even overall they enjoyed the film i didn't have those like i felt like they paid homage to what the black panther comics were while creating some Something new that fit into their universe and they did it extremely well i mean they even added the fact that he talks to the dead in there which well you know yeah i know that that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea as to the fact that possibly the soul stone is there but exactly that's one of the things so that's going to do it for time on on black panther as well avengers infinity war marketing has done a great job of feeding the hunger and feeding the need that 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 you know showing people the thing the type of things they want to see without giving away the story the russo brothers have recently come out with their own uh with their with their psa a letter to the fans that says please after you see it do not 
spoil any of it. Unfortunately, the way my show works is we are going to review the film and we are going to go full spoilers after we review the film. We will issue a huge spoiler warning before we do it. So, so please, please, for the love of God, yeah. if you listen to the episode and you have not seen the film, please listen to his cue for the yeah. fact that there will be spoilers and please just skip ahead just or out. turn that section and off. If you're someone who saw the film, don't spoil it for other people who hadn't don't, don't, don't give them any hints. Don't give them any expectations. Let everyone just kind now, of experience now, the film. Something I do want to mention about it is I'm pretty sure we can all agree. Thanos looks like a moldy nut sack. He does. He, he does. He, he, and his, his costume choice, uh, <laughs> the costume choice for, for Th- Thanos, uh, through, uh, for just the, what we've seen is f- just fucking stupid. He looks, he, 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 he looks like a purple tea bag. Like, like, like you just took a nut sack yeah. and you're, and, and you wrapped the rubber band around and, it. And I want to know why they couldn't just keep him. I don't know why they couldn't <laughs> keep him in his original outfit. Why do we have to go with this vest uh, with no helmet they, and the vest and stuff? I want to see him in, and, and they may do it. They may do it, uh, but I really wanted, I would rather see him in his actual. Here's why. His actual outfit. Thanos uh, it worships death. He courts death. Yes, this so, is true. So why does someone who courts death and worships death, why would they wear armor to protect themselves? Ah. Uh, why would someone I mean, this is, who this literally is, true, is looking but, for the match who could kill him wear armor? You're also talking about something that's more of a comic book knowledge and less of a an MCU movie knowledge. That's true. That's true. But they, we have plenty of time with the character as the villain coming up in Avengers Infinity War. So that's going to do it for Super Movie Brothers. Uh, look back. And by at God, the we should see Deadpool there. <laughs> Just because they both court death and death likes Deadpool more. There actually is a Deadpool comic at, that's out where him and Thanos are both vying for death's attention. So. <laughs> and if you haven't read it, please find it and read it. It's freaking hilarious. It is, it is hilarious. Thanos has met his match in the, in the craziness that is Wade Wilson. So that's going to do it for Super Movie Brothers tonight. I hope you enjoyed our look back at the Marvel Universe, us going through these phases one, two, and three on the past three episodes. I want to thank my guest, John, tonight for, for joining us. Thank John, you, tell everybody you. where they can find you. Uh, you can find me in Nalum Technicolor uh, podcast, search engine, put that in. You'll find it on the Podfix Network. Uh, for Wes, you can find us on po- Pornhub, X Videos, Red Tube, <laughs> anything that uh, possibly has anything to do with penis. You'll find me there as Rim Job Johnson. And uh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's good. Uh, you can also. <laughs> You can also find me uh, guest starring on Now in Technicolor. Uh, the episode should be should be out soon or or already up for me and John talking about Evil Dead and the Evil Dead remake. You can also find me on past episodes of Now in Technicolor. Uh, one we did was for Sons of Katie Elder and yep. Four Brothers, and another one was was it. It was at Batman Begins and uh, oh, Mask dude, of the Phantasm. Did, we did Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah, we, me and you did yeah. Mask of the because me and John are both huge Batman the Animated Series fans, so we had to get oh, that Oh, yes, there. we had to do that, so that was great. So uh, sure. And then I think we've been looking forward to this Evil Dead one for a while. So, Dude, I, uh, I've been looking forward to it ever since I gave Jay the homework assignment to watch Evil Dead 2, and he came back with negative reports. Wow. And I was just like, really? Damn it, Jay. Breaking my heart. So I want to talk about it in a more positive light. And since I can't do it on my show, fuck it. I'll just do oh, it on your me. show. We'll talk about it in a much more positive <laughs> light. Now, now the Evil Dead remake may get a little bit less positive. It may get but, less uh, positive, but there there are positive things there. To, to, there to there is. There's positive things there, though. Homage uh, success, I would say. It's it's an homage success. Uh, however, uh, whether it met the same level of of fandom or whether it, let, it met the same level of uh, genre defining as Evil Dead did, mm, no. Yeah, no. no. But that's going to do it uh, for us. And uh, make sure that you check out Super Movie Brothers on the Untapped app, U-N-T-T-A-P-D. That's where you can find all of our beer reviews on there. Some of that are on the show. The rest of them that aren't on the show. You can also reach out to us on Twitter. Leave any of your comics and feedbacks on there. 
at Super Movie Pod on there. And then, of course, me and John are both part of the Podfix Network, www.podfixnetwork.com. Make sure that you're going over there. You're checking out the uh, you're checking out the extra stuffs page. You're checking out our movie cocktail page for all of you our cocktail recipes. Better check out a certain point of view. Uh, you make sure you're checking out a certain point of view, which has just finished wrapping. Uh, and, and of course, another show that has both me and Dave on it, Loot Quest. Oh. Loot Quest. If you want to hear Dave, shows actually created. <laughs> if you want to hear Dave, just go full on Star Wars and uh, play an actual character in the Star Wars universe. Make sure you're listening to Loot Quest, and uh, especially if you're in the tabletop RPG games. Thanks a lot for listening tonight. Have a great night. Cheers. Cheers.